Coffee houses first became a big thing in the 16th century in the Islamic world. Even back then, they were used as places for free speech and community organizing, something that pissed off the people in charge almost immediately. In 1511, the governor of Mecca closed down all the coffee houses in the city, and similarly, the Grand Vizier Kapili of Constantinople was so worried about sedition that he banned not just coffee houses, but the drink itself. In fact, if you were caught drinking coffee twice under Kapili's rule, you would be sewn into a leather bag and thrown into the Bosporus Strait. Later, dude, Europeans who normally would meet in beer halls started gathering at coffee houses for a less boozy and more intellectual conversation. And a lot actually came out of these conversations. They say that the French Revolution was planned in a coffee house. Lloyds of London, the Stock Exchange, the Bankers Clearing House, newspapers like the Tatler and the Spectator were all thought up and planned in coffee houses. In Vienna in the early 1900s, coffee houses were the place for discussion, debate, literature, and art. A trend that peaked in 1913 when it said that Lenin, Trotsky, Freud, Joseph Tito, and Hitler would all frequent coffee houses in the same general area, though probably not the same coffee shop. That's a lot of radical thinkers and ideas coming out of one tiny slice of coffee culture. But the popularity of coffee also had terrible consequences, even beyond it. To find out more about the world's favorite caffeinated beverage, check out Mark Pendergrass's book called Uncommon Grounds and click here now to see more of folklore. European colonial governments in the Americas wanted to feed Europe's coffee demand 